What's up, divas? And what's up, divos? It's your girl, April. So you guys already know what time it is. It's Real Talk Wednesday. So I am back in my own environment for Real Talk. I decided just to leave it a little bit dark and not so many lights like normally because, let me tell y'all, I just came back from... Um, <sighs> school meeting my daughter's new teacher you know in arizona they start school august 2nd um they get out in may so back to school night and not even back to school night but you know just meeting the teachers and stuff yes hello oh, that's what was at my door so it was just like so hot and i was so happy because my bestie rebecca and i know you guys have heard about her my best friend rebecca who left arizona to move to cali she only had to go for like a year because her husband's job transferred him for like a year they came back and so i got to see her tonight and we were so happy we were just hugging each other not letting go like you know it was just like hard to let go i was so happy to see her like overly happy to see her i missed her so much so I was really happy about that, and um, we were standing outside talking, so it was, like, dumb hot. It's, like, 111 degrees, and a bitch back was sweating, like, OMG. So, yeah, I was, like, really, really hot. So that is the reason why I got the lights down a little bit low, but it also looks, like, very relaxing, you know what I'm saying? We don't need them up bright all the time. But other than that, so back to school is this coming Thursday. Um, I'm not really excited about it because I love my kids being around me in the house, like, especially Mumsy and they. They're just, like, so inviting, and we just chill all the time. So I'm really going to miss them during the daytime. But I still have my little boo, which is my grandson, so... Yes. Um, but you know, back to school, which is great for me because then I can get back up early, early in the morning and go do my walk-in early in the morning. So I'm excited about that. You know what I'm saying? Get back on my walk-in journey, you know, cause trust me, you really don't want to walk too far in the heat out here. Like you will pass the fuck out. But other than that, everything is okay. I'm all settled back in. Um, but I will be going back in October to New York because I have to make it to my son and daughter-in-law's baby shower because my new grandson is due in November. So I definitely will do that. Um, other than that, nothing really has been going on, you know, um, not that I can remember or can recall. Still on my weight loss journey. Got a new wig on. This is the RPG hair, not RPG show, but RPG hair, lace front, 14 inches, curly bob. You know, I really don't do the bob type thing, but it kind of works out of my favor. I actually really do like it. So the video for this will be posted up on Thursday. So make sure you guys watch it. Um, trying to think what else can I talk about that's just like so... Um, Hmm. I hate when people message me back to back. Like, you know what? This is like a huge pet peeve of mine. And I don't know if it's me being grumpy at my age, but if you text me or message me, send it all in one fucking message. Don't say, well, uh, don't do that because now you done sent me seven freaking messages and I'm like, chill out. Can you just send it all at one time? I cannot stand when people do that. Like, for real. Um... Let me just take a drink of water for that. I don't know if it's me, but I cannot stand to hear my phone go. Like, yo, can you just put it all in one fucking text message or one message? That's what I do. Like, unless we going back and forth with each other, like conversing. But other than I won't even converse with you too long via text message. But just don't do that. I, that is like the hugest pet peeve of mine. I'm not sure if I'm the only one out there, but like, yo, put that shit all in one fucking message. Seriously. Um, other than that, I do have some new videos coming out. Um, now it's got, now it's eight fucking messages. Like chill out. Okay. So anyway, other than that, my week has been great. This is, um, a microphone right here because now I'm using one of these clip on microphones. I'm trying to think if there was something that I needed to tell you guys because I be forgetting so much shit and I really try to not cram it all in but I try to remember to tell you guys everything but I really don't think that there isn't much to talk about um, as far as my life has changed. I mean you know I was away. I, you know what? It's funny because a lot of people that have watched like now it's nine messages. 
a lot of people have watched my real talks while I was in New York and a lot of people have said I look so refreshed and relaxed. And you know what? I didn't even realize that until I actually did look at the video myself. I was actually refreshed and relaxed. I was really, really relaxed. Um, I don't really get too much time alone, meaning even though I live in this house, I'm never here alone. Like, okay, so my t now it's 10 freaking messages. Oh my God. So, you know, you know, I have my two kids that go to school during the daytime. And so even if they go to school, I still have either my son here or he may be at work, but I still have like my daughter here and my Tiki here. So I'm never here like naked. Na I said naked. Never here alone, alone. So that means that I cannot just walk around naked if I wanted to, you know. So when I'm at my husband's, I'm getting, I'm getting really irritated now because this is 11 messages like, stop, just stop. Uh, you know, I don't have to wear no clothes, like, because it's his apartment, you know, we just, I walk around in my underwear or whatever, and I just enjoy that moment, and then it's just me by myself, like, you know what I'm saying, so he'll be at work during the daytime, and he gets off early at 3 30 so i'm there during the daytime by myself and i never ever get alone time not saying that i wish i did but sometimes it just feels nice and refreshing that it's just you by yourself and you could just walk around freely and trust me a bitch do walk around freely like hello but you know i was very refreshed and relaxed and i did have a great time though i'm not like the hugest fan of you know upstate new york but i still did have a relaxing moment and it wasn't about me hanging out because I really don't be wanting to do much. You know, my husband's always like, you should go out. Let's go out. Let's go do something. Yeah, I don't want you to be bored. I'm never bored when I'm with you. I didn't come here to hang out and go out. I came here to visit with you and our son and the grandson. And that's it. I didn't come here to hang out and go out. I just want to enjoy your company. But you know, we did go to see Tommy Davis. I told you guys that. And we went to the movies and stuff, but in dinner. But you know, I, I I'm like I'm a homebody. I do like to stay in the house a lot. You know, I I just like to be in the house. I'm not really sure why, but I've always been like that. You know, so I do enjoy my time just being there. And then when I have my alone time, it's great. You know, but other than that, you know, I'm chill, just chilling, just chilling, chilling, chilling. And we're gonna get into this real talk, okay? So if you have a real talk that you would like me to do you can always send me an email to muffin is my lovers 2012 at gmail.com make sure you put in the subject line real talk if you want to change the names of yourself or the characters or the people that you're speaking of in the email you can always let me know hey april i've already changed the names if you didn't say that i might and might not assume that you did or did not so just you know if you want to protect yourself because you may be you know a little bit leery that somebody that you are talking about may watch me as well then go ahead and change the names normally when you don't tell me that i i change it anyway so you know what i'm saying but other than that let's just get into this real talk okay yes all right, you guys, so let's get into this. Hey, April, I hope you find time to read this. But first, let me just say that in my head, you are my BFF. I love everything you do for your family, and I can't get enough of your channel. Thank you very much, girl. I listen to all your real talks and even re-listen to old ones as I drive in and out of work. And my and my head just be snapping back and forth, especially when you take that breath before you say, let me tell you something. Yes, you can tell you can't tell me you're not sitting right next to me in the car and we aren't talking to each other. I seriously love your spirit and honesty. I appreciate you taking the time to give us ladies some real advice. You can call me Lola. Okay, I've been wanting to email you for a long time now with my dilemma. Takes breath. Whew. This is what she's saying. A little backstory about my ex-husband. We were married for about 10 years before we divorced. He stayed in and out of the hospital and had many medical issues, which made me his nurse at times. Cool, right? Not. He treated me horribly for years and was very abusive. But the great news is I left for good after about 12 years. Moving forward, about five years later, I met a wonderful man. Let's call him Levi. 
Within a year, we were married, moved to a big house with my kids, now our kids. And it was like a final destiny stepped, a fine, it was like I finally stepped into my destiny. He is everything I've asked God for in a man. He treats me and my children great. He too was previously married for 10 years, 10 plus years. So here's the story. He's been diagnosed with diabetes while we were in our second year together. And only due to me nagging him about going to the doctor, why are men so afraid of the doctor? Anyway, he has the type that can go away, but he needs to take injections of insulin. He looked so bad before I pleaded with him to go to the emergency room. He had no appetite and was losing weight so fast. The doctor told him I saved his life because he was on the brink of going into a diabetic coma. His sugar level was so high, he ended up being hospitalized for about a week to get him stabilized. I have flashbacks of being in the hospital with my ex-husband and just pray to God that this man will take this seriously and take control of his health. I mean, damn, I just got this wonderful man. I'm like scared to death to lose him for something he can help himself into curing. So since then, April, I decided to take control of my own weight gain because, girl, I want to be around for my kids. And you know, being in love will put the pounds on you. Yes, I do. I struggle with every diet plan from pills to expensive ass prepackaged foods from Metafast, but the weight just would never completely come off. I knew I needed help. After four kids and taking care of everyone else, being on high blood pressure medication for years, I decided to inquire about bariatric, bariatric surgery. After months of searching, I ended up getting approved for gastric sleeve surgery. This surgery is where they cut out about 80% of your stomach, which allows you to only eat small portions. What can I say about the surgery? I lost a total of 90 pounds, and it's the best thing I think I've done for myself. I don't have shortness of breath, no more high blood pressure, no more sleep apnea machines. My knees work now, and my feet don't swell anymore. My stamina has improved to 200%. My doctors are so proud of me. I have had a bit of loose skin, and I'm seeking a surgeon for a mommy makeover this come 2019. I honestly, I feel he preferred me bigger my husband, and maybe feeling like he has to step his game up. During my journey, there were times he'd look at me and just stare and say something dumb like, you skinny with you skinny with his lip turned up, like he smells shit or something. You know that face. Like, you know how people be like, mm, I know face. I didn't let it fucking bother me. I know that's his own insecurity. Okay, but here is the tea. Sorry so long. Mr. Levi isn't taking care of himself at all. He rarely takes his insulin. He won't go to the gym with me. He doesn't go to the doctor for his checkups or even to just go get a prescription for a refill on his medications. When I ask him about his meds, he says, I took it at the job. Does he forget that I know he's supposed to inject himself three times a day? Yeah, okay, right. I feel like I'm being a nag and he acts like I'm frustrating him. April, I know I said better or worse, but sis, why is this why is he playing with his health like this? And you know his body is starting to break down on him. He continuously thirsty, he pees all day long, our sex life is non existent, and he acts like he's only concerned about cutting the fucking grass outside. I tell him I love him and I need him to help himself. If he were here to get the same surgery, I got, I got, it's guaranteed 100% that it'll cure him for diabetes. He went to one appointment for it and never returned. I do know that surgery is not for everyone, but if it would help you live, why not? I'm frustrated in more than one way with him. Just today we got into it because I caught him jerking off. Laugh out loud. Sorry, but you are not about to lay in bed with a whole woman who's frustrated and pleasure yourself. Fuck out of here. Trust, I know men do that on the regular, but please not when I'm right over here growing cobwebs down there. I don't know what to do anymore. How can I motivate him or just be a good wife in this matter? April, I would really appreciate any advice from you because I'm confused and I don't know what to do at this point. I really feel like I'm headed to taking care of a sick man again who won't take care of himself. My patience isn't like it used to be. He's not a baby and he needs to take better care of himself. We are both in our 40s and this is a pivotal time for us to, for us 40 year olds. She is right. Thank you for taking the time to read this and for any advice. Again, I attached some pics below. So you know what? First of all, they are cute together. 
but why do you look like you are his little daughter girl so she's telling me he's for she they're both in their 40s honey you look like you're about 18 years old no lie straight up you look like you are 18 years old okay and you can see the difference because I'm not going to show you guys the pictures, but you know, I also, now I'm seeing a before and after shot of her and you have lost so much weight, girl. Like what? Hello? I'm not listening. Now. I'm wanting to sleep. You look amazing and I'm happy for you. Like I love to see people happy within themselves. And you can tell like when people lose weight, they start looking younger in the face. And because she has lost so much weight, you really do look like totally different. Like your face is so much younger, more youthful looking. And now, you know, she showed me the before and after of her at work. She's got her uniform on, same uniform, but of course, different size and totally a huge difference. Like, wow. Now I'm hating because did you just show me a picture of you with a sundress on in blue? That was the before. And then the after picture, why this bitch got on some leggings and a freaking little halter top on? Like, okay, bitch, I see them abs and that stomach. I'm definitely jealous right now. Like, seriously, you look beautiful. You look amazingly beautiful. And you look like 20 to 30 years younger, okay? You definitely look super duper young, okay? So now I can see why you and your husband kind of do differ because, you know, he is diabetic and he does need to exercise. Like I tell you guys all the time, we are all different shapes and sizes for a reason. Okay. But Hey, why do you have the, look who comes in. Why do you have that long sleeve shirt on boy? Somebody was supposed to go get their haircut today, but they were overcrowded. Me? So yeah. So he has to go back tomorrow. He's getting his hair cut off. I get Where's Taki? Oh, he was. All right, I'll see you when I come out, okay? All right. Yeah, so he was supposed to get his hair cut today. I'm so excited because I cannot wait to see what it looks like. But anyway, like I said, we all come in different shapes and sizes, okay? And that's intended. But when it comes to your health and you may need to lose a few pounds for your health, why not? Okay, because life is already short as it is. So why not live it to the best of your ability? Live it as long as you can, especially when you got loved ones that are surrounding you and you know that they need you. You know what I'm saying? Why not live as long as you can? Listen, that is the reason why I started deciding to go out for walks and lose weight because I would lay up here. My knees would be hurting so bad. My feet would swell up even just from sitting. You know what I mean? My legs would hurt if I walked like halfway down the block to the mailbox. No lie, no exaggeration either. Like, and I laid up here one night and I was like, girl, you only like, I think I was probably like 42, 43 at the time. And I, I was just basically like, you know what? You need to do something with yourself because all you do is sit and make videos and make wigs and your legs are hurting. You can't even walk half a block. Like that shit is not cool. Like I don't want to be decrepit and like old before my time. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, first of all, I'm happy to be 44, but if I had a choice between 22 versus 44, half the age, a bitch would definitely go back to 22. Okay. I mean, like, listen, I'm trying to, I'm trying to be here for as long as I can. And I know that me being healthy is like number one. Yeah, true indeed. I do have my weaknesses. I do have my weaknesses. I love them fucking trolley worms, some sour worms. And I like like sweets every now and then. I'm, and I like a good ass fucking burger too. But I had to realize that, you know what? It's all about moderation and control. You have to sometimes walk away from that shit. And then as an adult and when you're in your 40s, and even not even then, but then so, you know, you want to make sure that you're healthy at all times, especially if you've already been diagnosed with an illness like diabetes. Diabetes is very, 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 very critical. It can be very, you know what I'm saying, life-taking. My grandfather, my mom's dad, he was a diabetic. And I remember I used to have to give them them insulin shots every morning, okay? Because he never would give them to himself, so I would give them to him. So at an early age, probably like seven, I was giving my grandfather insulin shots, okay? And it was no big deal. He would sit up there and prick his finger, you know what I'm saying? Give him his insulin shots. I don't remember him taking it more than once a day. I know I would give it to him in the mornings. I don't remember him taking it twice. But he had to have these shots, and it was, you know, like, 
he had to make sure that he would eat right. He had his, his sugar-free candy on hand, you know, and like not just him, but like I had a friend in high school who had diabetes and I, I don't know, maybe she wasn't taking care of herself properly, but she would pass out. She would get sick. She would end up in the hospital a lot. You know what I'm saying? And I'll never forget the girl, Nadira was her name. And she was a sweet girl. She could sing her ass off, but she just was sickly. She had diabetes and you know, it was really hard on her. I, I can remember that. And then there are people who do pass away from that disease. And why would you want to die from something when you can definitely avoid it? Like, I know, trust and believe, it's hard to eat healthy. It is hard. Like, eating healthy is, one, for one, more expensive, okay? And for two, it's super duper hard, especially when you have to make sure, like, yo, I got to eat this. I got to eat this. Trust me when I tell you guys, I'm so sick and tired of fucking salads, okay? And, like, certain shit, like... I, 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 I just really sometimes be wanting to just give up on this whole, like, fucking weight loss journey, especially when I, I stayed like stuck at 92, like, excuse 92 pounds at 192. And then I go to 188. And then I go right back to 192. I, I mean, like, okay, I guess I can be happy with not going any further up than 192, but it is so hard. You know what I'm saying? Because you have to like prepare yourself for this every fucking day. Like eating certain things are, a drug eating bad things can be a drug like for me it is like candy not even really chocolate but just like candy in general like gummy worms and shit like i fuck i will fuck that shit up and it's a drug like i had to walk past a bag of freaking trolley worms today in the grocery store because i really fucking wanted them but i didn't need them so it is a life choice and sometimes that life choice is really hard and like for me i know that you know i just have to have the willpower now with your husband he knows that he has to take these needles every day some people don't like taking needles every day you know what i'm saying and that might be his issues but you know we do a lot of shit that we don't want to do we don't like because we have to and that's just going to give us a lot more longevity to our lifespan and what you need to do is really have a sit down talk with him. He might be in his feelings about the weight loss that you have lost. You know, say he may feel like a little bit insecure of himself, but that is on him. He has to do the right thing for himself. Maybe in the evenings, you know what I'm saying? When it's cooler out, you guys take a walk together. Maybe even, you know, say, hey, let's go for a little romantic walk. Sometimes that might spike, spark up the flame in the relationship. And it also may spark up the fact that we can go for a walk every night when it's cooler and we can be able to spend some time together. That'd just be like you and him time together. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes we have to put it like that for people. So that way they just don't think of it as we just trying to throw it out there that, you know what? You just want to lose some weight. You just want me to lose some weight. You know, cause sometimes when you say things to people that may be a little bit overweight, they may feel as that you are picking at them or you're getting at them. But in reality, I'm just looking out for you because I do really want you to be here for just as long as I'm here. Me, you, and our kids together. This is what it's all about. I want you to be healthy. If you are healthy at that size that you are at, then that's fine. But you're not healthy at that size. You are diabetic and you have already been hospitalized. So why not prepare yourself to work towards being here for the longevity, okay? You have to let him know, listen, me and the kids, we need you. We need you. And let them know, hey, listen, let's go for walks in the evening. It don't have to be no hour long. It can start off as a 30-minute walk. That way, you know what I'm saying, you guys are able to walk together and spend time together. Sorry about that. You know what I'm saying? Spending time together, even if it is for a walk in the evening in your neighborhood, it's 30 minutes. Okay, that's how it starts off. If he is not used to exercising and walking that much, don't strain him out or stress him out with a whole entire hour just for the start. But here's the thing. You don't have to time it. If you guys are walking and talking about certain things in life and your relationship, you know what I'm saying? You forget the timing and then you just continue. And by the time y'all are done and y'all are back home, y'all don't walk maybe a mile or two. And he didn't even realize it because you guys are so engrossed in the conversation that you were having. So that's what I think. Maybe you got, you can start him off with just like, let's take a walk together. I want to talk with you. I want to have some me time. Even though you can go in the bedroom and have some me time. 
How about going out together in the freshness of the wilderness, of the air, of the world, and recognizing things, pointing out things, checking out the neighborhood together? You know what I'm saying? Doing shit like that instead of forcing him to be in the gym. I'm going to tell you what. I, I'm not like a big fan of the gym. I'm, I'm just not a big fan of the gym. And for those who are kudos to you guys, I mean, I used to be in the gym. If you remember on my first channel, when I was overweight, you know what I'm saying, when I was bigger, um... I would go to the gym every fucking day only because my husband was there. So he motivated me. But now you can't get me to go in no gym. Maybe I will change. My attitude will change when he comes back. But I just don't really like to be in the gym. I don't really like to look at these motherfucking skinny ass people or these bitches that got them little small abs. I feel some type of way. Okay. Very fucking intimidating. And I'm not really trying to be there for that. So I'm more comfortable, like, you know, working out in my house and going for a walk in my neighborhood. That's me. You know what I'm saying? Not everybody is like that. So some people, do feel a little bit intimidated at the gym so you have to realize maybe your husband is feeling that way because yeah his shape is not like you or yours you and him are a couple but you have lost a lot of weight and he is still the same so he may feel some type of way when he walks in the environment of being at the gym with you and all these other ass motherfuckers that are fit and he is not but we all have to start off somewhere you know what i'm saying they didn't just walk up in the gym like that I mean, maybe some of them did okay but we have to work our way up to that you know what i'm saying me personally like i said i'm not a gym person however you know i like to walk outside and that's what maybe that may work for him. You know what I'm saying? That may give him his stamina back. You know what I'm saying? That may also give you guys your relationship back to where you guys are spending me time out in, the, you know, outside in the evening to where, you know what, let me come back and put this on her or put this on him. Either way, you need to get him into the habit of doing what's right for himself. And I think it really starts with just taking him outside with you and saying, you know what, babe, won't you come for a walk with me? I will love your company. You know what I'm saying? It starts like that. Even though you got it in your mindset, I'm going to get this motherfucker to start walking and exercising. But... I'm going to do it in a way that he is around me and we are having a conversation and just bring it into him like, yo, I need you. I love you. Sometimes we as people, not as women or men, but just as people in general, find it so hard to open up so deeply with people. And I, I say that because I get like that. You know what I'm saying? I'm not like the most emotional person in the world, meaning like, if me and you have already had bad terms with each other, I'm not about to open myself up to you. And also because, listen, I know like if I'm too overly emotional and also if I am too overly expressive to you about how I truly feel about you, I feel like you might take that as me being vulnerable and then just try to shit on me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I get like that with my husband, even though we have been together for 20 years, I still be like that. He has no problems expressing himself and it's just so endearing. I like love to hear him express himself to me because it allows me to be able to see like, yo, this nigga really do love me. But you know, it's easier for me to say that to him when I'm upset or if I just write it. Like I cannot be so emotional at times because I have just been through a lot and I just feel like that's me letting down my wall. And if I do that, you're going to do some shit to fuck it up. And I know that's not a good way to think, but at least I'm being honest with you guys. And I'm saying this and like, maybe you, Miss Lola have not really, really like went hard and expressed yourself. And sometimes that's just hard in general because we all have our pride and shit. You know what I'm saying? But sometimes it really does help when you are just so open about it to that person and expression of how you feel about him, how you feel about yourself, how you feel about y'all as a family, that sometimes that is all they need to hear. Telling somebody, I love you, I love you, I love you, I need you here, that's cool too, but it really doesn't get in depth with how you truly feel. And sometimes we as people really need to express that to one another. And we also really need to hear that from one another to be able to understand like, yo, this motherfucker really loves me. And like, that's how I have come to terms with like, with my husband. Like I knew he's always loves me, but he has really expressed himself to that point in our relationship. And I know regardless of what this nigga really do love me. Okay. Like dang, yeah, you fucked up, but yo, you really do love me. And so 
we need that. Okay. We need to hear that sometimes because it's just reassurance. Like, yo, okay. It's also motivation. Like, yo, okay. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this for her. I'm going to do this for me. I'm going to do this for our kids. I'm going to do this for us. You know what I'm saying? Because she's right. I do need to be here. You nagging at him and yelling at him. I understand that because you are very concerned. But sometimes we got to take a different approach on shit. And it's fucked up because his life is on the line. And don't nobody want to lose somebody that they truly do love. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the hardest shit ever to lose someone that they, like, really do love. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's like losing, like, your mother or your father who, you know what I'm saying? Those are the people that brought you into this world. So sometimes when you tell them this, you know... Just by nagging, they could push that shit in the back of their mind. And it's not like we nagging because we're not. It's just that we care. But sometimes we got to approach it a different way. And let him know, do you have issues with giving yourself the insulin? Because I'll be more than happy to help you with it. If he is taking three insulin shots a day, then it's critical for him. And he really needs to get on his game and do what's right for him, for you, and for y'all family. Like on some real shit. And you can tell him I said the shit. You know what I'm saying? I know how it is to go through shit with health issues. My mom suffered for a very long time with thyroid disease, you know what I'm saying? And the outcome for her now is good, but she has had issues with her eyes. I'm not really sure what it's called, but you know, it has made her eyes protrude. You know, it has made her be depressed. It has made her lose hair. So, you know, shit like that, you know what I'm saying? It's not the same illness, but in in respect, it's the same meaning right here in your heart, how you feel about the person. Like, I would die if something was to happen to my mom, you know what I'm saying? Especially something that she could avoid. And I tell her all the time, you need to go to the appointment. You need to go to your appointment. You know what I'm saying? This this is me. This is what I do because this is my family and I love her to death. And, you know, Tati does the same thing to me. Thank God I don't have to go for my knees anymore and things like that because I've lost the weight and I have exercised. But, you know what I'm saying? You have to really get in his mind like, yo, you need to be here for us. We are family. And you promised that you would be here. Just take him out for a walk, girl, and try to start it off like that. I, I promise you, you just got to work your way in slowly but not too slow because we don't need him, you know, leaving no time soon. You know what I'm saying? And if you guys have any tips on just helping her get her husband to go to the doctors and take his medication. Leave it below. If you've had any situations like this and what you did, leave your suggestions below because this is a life matter. You know what I'm saying? And we all need to be here for our children and families. So I would definitely say, listen, girl, you can tell she loved this man because the way she was smiling, like, God damn, girl, you cheesing. But you look beautiful, sweetheart. You lost all that weight. You looked absolutely beautiful. And as for the sex life, sweetheart, you know, because your husband is a little overweight, maybe it's a little bit more strenuous on him. He may get tired. Or, like I said, he may be in his feelings about you have lost the weight and he may feel insecure about himself. And you guys to let him know, listen, I love you for who you are. I be insecure about my my weight, you know what I'm saying? Because I always be like, oh, my stomach, you know what I'm saying? My stomach and stuff. My husband always be telling me, you look beautiful, and I love you for who you are. I believe him, but it's for me. I feel insecure about it myself. And that might be an issue with your husband. He may feel insecure because you have lost all this weight, and he hasn't. So he may feel some type of weight because, look, he may feel like, well, why she lose all this weight? She wasn't happy with her weight, so she lost it. Maybe she's not happy with mine. So I don't want to take my clothes off from in front of her and I don't want to do it. You know what I'm saying? You never know what a person can be thinking. I, I guarantee you, you never freaking know what a person, you don't even mean those intentions, but the shit that goes through people's heads from zero to 60 real quick, you would be amazed. Okay. Like seriously, trust me, my mind has wandered off and huh, I can only man. Listen, I can only imagine. Like, let me tell y'all, when my husband started going to the gym before me, he had gotten small and I was just like, he was going like months before me. And I was feeling some type of way, like, um, and them bitches talking to you at the gym. You know, this is just me, my mind wandering and shit. And then I was like, you know what? Fuck that. I'm going to the gym too. Cause if he want to look good, I'm gonna look good too for him. And so 
you know what I'm saying? My mind started wandering too. Like, hey, this nigga getting off fit on me. Here I am. He's still telling me I love you for who you are, which I know he meant it. But how, you know what I'm saying? I didn't feel secure myself. So I, I, I'm pretty sure your husband has not been giving it up and you may call him jerking off. It's probably because he doesn't want you to see his body because yours don't look the same. You understand what I'm saying? We all have like, a, we all feel self-conscious about ourselves many, many times. Okay. And like, there are things that can go through your mind and your brain and <laughs> That you could just be like, wow, I never even thought that about you or felt that way about you. And you're thinking all these things. And I'm sorry you may feel that way, but that is truly not how I feel. I'm just saying. And then he may feel like you're trying to get cute and fit for God knows who. You have to really sometimes, we as people, and when we in relationships, we have to make our partners feel secure about themselves at times. And I know that's not, you know, you should always feel secure within, but sometimes we have to give our partners the security as well. You know what I'm saying? So, Lola, I hope this was helpful, and I hope the divas and divos could give you some words of wisdom that will help your husband, okay, and your relationship. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. All right. Hey, April, I am one of your faithful followers. I have been watching your channel for years. I started watching your channel when you lived in New York. I remember watching you make your videos with your cigarettes. It was smoke, yeah, because I used to smoke cigarettes and I would smoke my cigarettes during real talk. And I would be right there watching your videos and smoking mine too. It has been amazing watching you and your kids grow over the years, and I feel like one of your family members. Well, here goes my story, which is probably going to be a little long. I am very indecisive concerning rekindling a friendship with an old girlfriend. Okay. You can call me Anita and my old girlfriend <clears throat> and my old girlfriend, you can call her Tina. I was in the store shopping about six months ago and ran into an old friend, Tina. We stayed friends all the way up through high school. We lost contact with each other because life just took us in different directions. I got married and had kids and moved out of the area. I'm not really sure what Tina has been doing with herself since high school. When I tried asking her what she's been up to over the years, somehow the conversation always bounces on another subject. Before I could get any clear answers out of her, you know, that's what happened. Most of her conversation is about how disrespectful her boyfriend is to her, how she has walked into the room on several occasions and heard her boyfriend telling other women he loves them. She said he told her that he is dating two other women. To me, Tina sounds like a person with no self-respect. It has been a strain talking to her. When the phone rings, I'm always reluctant, reluct I cannot say that, reluctant to answer it. I already know what the conversation is going to be about. It's a real strain talking to her. She gives me a headache. I, for one, am not the chick who takes shit off of any man, especially disrespect. I went through a divorce and a lot of events that molded me into being a self-sufficient woman. I am single and enjoying my life with my children. I'm right in the middle of starting my own business and working hard to live a peaceful, drama-free life as much as possible. I can spot game in men before they even start playing it. Tina's boyfriend does not take her anywhere, and I mean nowhere. Not out to dinner, movies, or traveling. He is a DJ and never invites her to any of his gigs. Don't even tell her where he's gigging at. I tell her all the time she sounds like somebody's bed warmer. I have tried over and over to tell her to leave him and stand on your own two feet, but it goes in one ear and out the other. I'm getting tired of listening to her complaints. She's not trying to change anything. I feel she is just using her situation to get me to feel sorry for her. She has no plans on leaving him. I really get tired of trying. I'm really getting tired of listening to her talk about nothing. Tina has been living with her boyfriend for the last seven years. They both live with his elderly stepfather in his stepfather's house. I feel she is living with him out of convenience. Tina is bringing nothing to bring to my life but a headache. 
I know she's glad we have connected again, but I'm getting sick of her woos and woes. We finally got together after months of talking on the phone. Tina works retail with every crazy hours, with very crazy hours, and she lives about an hour away from me. I live in the next county over from her. We hung out a few times. Everything was cool. We laughed and had fun. When I dropped Tina back off at her house, she asked me to come in and meet a boyfriend. Seeing that she, seeing that he was now home, I went in to meet him. I really did not want to meet him though, but did not want to be rude to her either. I went in to meet him. I held my hand out to shake his and he pulled me into his arms and hugged and kissed my cheek. I was really taken back by that move. Like, hello, who does that? He don't know me like that to be kissing and hugging on me. I must also say that he had wandering eyes. Oh, shit. He looked me up and down like I was on the menu. Damn, I felt disrespected. April, I was so surprised that I became speechless. Needless to say, I headed straight to the door after that. Fuck. fuck. Wait, after that, fuck Gret. Oh, like a fuck, fuck greet. Oh, shit. After that, fuck greet. I was so happy to run back into my girl. T I was I was so happy to run back into my girl, Tina, and really look forward to chit chatting with her and hanging out. But now I'm not sure if I want to. I'm really not down with the stupid shit she has going on in her life. I'm not sure if I'm struck, stuck, struck in the past of how we used to be. I was thinking maybe I would just ask April her opinions. I love your real top topics and you're always real. Okay. Love Anita. So basically, Anita just rekindled her friendship or just ran into her friend Tina at the store out shopping. And then, you know, they exchanged numbers, rekindled the shit. But, you know, the last time y'all really was cool was in high school. So it's grown up time. You know what I'm saying? Anita has moved on, had children, married, divorced. You know what I'm saying? Got herself going, move, going on in life. She got shit going on in life. As for Tina, well, every time the conversation comes up about what you've been up to, girl, it always just goes back to just really nothing about nothing or her fucking low life boyfriend. So basically, Anita don't want to be talking to Tina all the time because, okay, I get it. Who the hell wants to talk to somebody every motherfucking day and all they do is complain, okay? That just brings bad mojo and bad drama and shit, negativity. Like, listen, I'm all for trying to talk to you and helping you out, but I'm not trying to hear that shit every day. That reminds me of, you know, we weren't friends for that long, me and this girl, but you guys remember the girl that I told you? Her name is Devin, and she was the one who brought me to the airport and said she would bring Mumsy to school while I was gone and et cetera, et cetera. And how she would call me every day depressed about her boyfriend, how he's tried to steal. He didn't try to, he did. He took the furniture out of her house and et cetera, et cetera. But she would call me every day crying about it or woe is me, woe is, you know what I'm saying? Shit like that. And her daughter and Mumsy were in the class together. That's how we met and shit. Well, I liked Devin. She was a really cool person, but I could not take hearing the same motherfucking sob story every day. Like I am more than happy to give you my thought and advice on your situation or, you know what I'm saying? But if you going to come to me every motherfucking day with the same ass story, how much advice can you fucking get from me? Bitch, I'm going to start charging you. I'm going to have to start charging you for my motherfucking advice. Like seriously. And it didn't really grow us distant, but she stopped calling me like that every day because she became really depressed with him. And finally, he left her, okay? She got rid of him, and she was happy. Well, come to find out, you guys. As I was at a party at main event for one of my daughter, Mumsy's friend, Devin's daughter was there. And we had stopped speaking to each other because of the whole airport thing. Like, just out of the clear blue, you just got a job. You, you know, seniority. Had, it just was all weird. And you stopped calling me. <clears throat> Funny thing is, I never, ever seen her daughter's... Well, it's not even her daughter's father. I never even seen her, her ex-boyfriend. I don't remember what his name was. I think it was Rick or something. I don't know. We just gonna call him Rick. I never even seen the dude Rick who she was always complaining about. But I know that, you know what I'm saying, she said he had dreads and they had been together for so long, et cetera, et cetera. Well, when it was time for the parents to come and pick up their kids, 
I seen her daughter and I was talking to her daughter. And I seen this guy who looked like Lil John. You know Lil John. Okay. With the dreads and the fucking mouth full of teeth. He was like his height, okay, with some dreads. So that's Lil John. So I see him standing there with her daughter looking me up and down like I was on the motherfucking menu. Okay. So I'm like putting two and two together. I'm like, hey, where's your mom? Oh, she didn't come. And he was like, oh, I'm here to pick her up. So first of all, I don't even know you, do. Second of all, okay, now I'm trying to figure out who the fuck you are because you got dressed just like she had expressed that, you know, her ex had. Now, meanwhile, while she was explaining and telling me all of this shit about how they've been going through all this shit all the, over the years, I thought the dude was like some, you know, I don't know. I didn't know he looked like little John. I mean, but each person's taste is their own taste, okay? He reminds me of Little John. So he introduces himself, and I could have swore he said his name was Rich. I don't know what the fuck he said it was, because I wasn't even paying him no mind. But because I was talking to, you know, the girl, the little girl, Mumsy's friend. And he was, I was like, oh, okay, are you her father? And because I knew it wasn't his father. She's, he's like, no, 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 I'm her stepdad. Right then and there. I know who it was. So now you're, I didn't say this, but I'm saying to myself, okay, this the nigga that was living in her house and she didn't count it down so many days of how long they've been apart. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like she called me, oh, it's been 47 days. I'd be like, 47 days for what? Since me and Rick or whatever his name is, have been apart since I broke up with him. I'm like, you keep a count? You got a motherfucking calendar with this shit? Because who the fuck counts down? You know, I'm, the nigga moved back in with you. I know all the tea. Now I know why you didn't want to pick Mumsy up or talk to me anymore. Because you, the nigga moved back in with you, okay? I Listen, Mumsy tell me all the motherfucking tea. Not all the tea, but whatever her friends tell her, she come and tell me, okay? So, yeah, he moved back in with her. For one, not only do you have little John picking up your daughter, but he done took all the furniture and the TVs out your house when he moved out, which weren't his, okay? Two, you know the nigga was cheating on you, I think, or whatever, I don't know. But he treats you like shit. How you love, how you about to let this little nigga treat you like shit? Man, that's not I'll knock you the fuck out. But either way, here nor there. And he's looking at me like I'm a motherfucking lo lollipop. He's looking me up and down like I'm an ice cream candidate. Like, the, okay? I was too seconds off of saying yo dude what the fuck is wrong with you but you know what i wasn't the only one that noticed that my daughter nay was there with me she noticed it when i told her who it was she was like well dang you wouldn't even know he had a girl the way he was looking i was like exactly little john ass disrespectful if i was speaking to her he didn't even know that i knew her you know i finally you know worked it into like oh i know her. i know her yes i know her mom we are friends. I didn't say we were friends. I said we're friends. So maybe you will stop fucking looking at me like that, you disrespectful little fuck, okay? But if she and I would have uh, still been friends, if, if she would I, hold on, because Nate is texting me. If she and I would have still been friends, I would have let her know, like, yo, your man is disrespectful. He ain't got no cool for about himself. And on top of that, you're a dumbass. But you know what I'm saying? I'm glad she ain't speaking to me no more because I don't want to hear your fucking woos and cries. Like, she has come over to my house on several occasions and, and broke down in tears to me. I'm all for girl power and supporting one another and helping one another out in a situation. And, you know, I'm all for that. However, there's a time, and here comes a motherfucking time when, bitch, you need to fucking. Put your foot down and say enough is enough. And let me tell you something, Anita. If she's not going to do it, you can't do it for her. You know what I'm saying? I, I'll be the first to tell you, listen, I'm not about the drama and the fuckery and all that bullshit. I got enough shit going on in my life. I got five kids and about to have three grandkids. And about to have three grandkids. I don't need nobody's extra drama, nobody's extra bullshit, and nobody's extra anything. I'm good, okay? I don't need to be bothered with it. And when you have a friend that's just constantly negative, 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 that puts you in a space where you yourself 
is going to be negative. And then you don't want to focus on shit because all this negative energy is around you. Like, listen, let me tell you something. I don't do that negative shit. That's probably why I don't have too many friends, okay? I am happy that my best friend, Rebecca, is back in town because now I can have my friend. The whole entire time she was gone, I didn't do anything with myself but just go to New York and be here. I don't have time for the negative bullshit. If you ain't got nothing positive going on in your life, then sweetheart, me and you are just not compatible as friends. Straight up. Because this bitch gonna get you in some bullshit that you don't need, okay? She already got this man over there telling her that he sees other women, and she's straight up stupid. Straight up stupid, all right? And look, stupid is as stupid does. You know what they say, birds of a feather flock together. Girlfriend, do not get yourself involved in that shit. You cannot force yourself to be friends with anybody and want to hang around them. This is one thing that you cannot do if it ain't genuine here and you really don't feel like if you really don't feel like you want to be around her then bitch don't fuck with her you know what i'm saying you got your own shit going on and people like her are gonna do nothing but bring you fucking drama and let me tell you something at any age we too old for the motherfucking drama. I don't give a fuck if you 21 if you 15 if you 55 at any age we too old for the motherfucking drama. Like, seriously? Like, where where are we doing this at? I love my friends, the, the little bit of friends that I do have. But I'm not going to sit around and see you get beat the fuck down. And you don't want to do anything about it. You know what I'm saying? That's hard on a person. Do you know how hard that shit is to listen to every fucking day some negative shit? Girl... If you're not happy, what the fuck makes you think I'm happy hearing this shit? You know what I'm saying? What do you want me to do? What does she What does she want you to do? Does she want you to just openly say, would you like to come stay with me? Please, Anita, don't do that. All right? Don't. All right? Because you don't need anybody living in your home that don't fucking belong there. Okay? You do not need her crazy boyfriend coming over. And I say he's crazy because if you can go and tell your girl, yeah, I'm seeing two other people, et cetera, et cetera. Um, he's crazy. Then that's straight up crazy. You got balls for days. If you could tell your girl that lived with you for the past seven years that, yeah, I'm fucking with two other bitches. That's crazy. Cause you got balls for days. If you do that, like, seriously. And then on the fact that he done embraced you like you was his best friend from high school and hadn't seen you in years, it's kind of weird. Because if my husband was to do something like that, he, he doesn't. He don't even want to meet. Like, he'll meet my friends. like, But he don't he don't want to be in the room with them. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, if it's just me and them. Well, me and them. Like, I got a whole bunch of motherfucking friends. But back then, you know what I'm saying? If it was just me and her. He go on and do his own thing. He said, I'm not here to be in your conversation and hanging out with you and your friends. If your friend doesn't have a husband that me and him could kick it with, then I don't want to be involved in this. Hi, how you doing? And he gets to move it. Hug it. Girl, let me tell you something. If mine was to hug and kiss on my friend like that, right then and there, I'd probably be like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Okay? What the fuck is really wrong with you? But, you know, each person is different and... If he's already disrespectful to her, then, girl, he was sizing your fucking ass the fuck up. All right, bitch? He was sizing you the fuck up, like, on some real shit. Me, I would basically lose ties with her because if she's not your type of pipe and she's not the type of friend that you want to see yourself hanging around with, then I would definitely just leave it alone and just go about my business. You know, talk, for, talk to her from time to time. But just try to avoid the subject about her and her boyfriend. You know what I'm saying? But if she's not the type of person that you want to hang around, then by definitely just don't hang around her. Nobody needs drama. And today's day and age, there are some crazy motherfuckers out there. And I tell you what, I would not need nobody's bullshit. You don't know what her boyfriend is capable of doing or liable doing, you know what I'm saying, or her doing, you know what I'm saying? You might give her some advice and she take it and it backfire on her and then she come blaming you, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's time to grow the fuck up, sweetheart. If you want to stagnate yourself in that fucking old seven-year relationship, then listen, honey, go ahead and do so. But all that negative shit around you, let me tell you something. I don't need no fucking negative shit around me. I'm straight up. I avoid it. And if I have to avoid it to the point where I ain't got no friends, then I guess that's cool. I'd rather have no friends than have a whole bunch of drama going on.
But what? I'm too old for that shit. We all too old for that shit. Hunty, distance yourself. Because if she ain't got nothing going for herself, all right, nine times out of ten, you and her are going to probably get into an argument that is going to make the matters worse. So just distance yourself real easy and let her do her. Maybe she'll come around and come to her senses, but if you've been in a relationship and you're living with somebody, sweetheart, there is no convenience. I don't give a fuck how convenient it is to live with somebody. I don't give a fuck. Once you tell me that, oh, you are fucking with two other bitches and me, nigga, I could care less about the convenience. I sleep on the motherfucking alley corner before I stay in that motherfucking house while you constantly disrespecting me. God damn, have some pride and self-esteem about your motherfucking self. You know what I'm saying? Like, for real? I don't understand. Bitches, females, women, whatever. <laughs> we need to have a little bit of self-pride about shit. You know what I'm saying? Have some self-esteem. There is a whole world out there full of men and females. Okay? You can take your choice or take your pick. Just don't pick mine. All right, bitch? And don't pick somebody else's. All right, bitches? But why bother being in a relationship with somebody who don't give two fucks about you? I never could, I, I don't know, you know what I'm saying? Listen, life too short, for real. Life too short for some fucking bum-ass Negro or bum-ass man in general or bum-ass bitch. Life too short. Yeah, you may love them, but I promise you this much. After a while, being away from them, the happiness sinks the fuck in and you don't love their ass no motherfucking more. You be sitting there talking to yourself like, why the fuck did I even bother with this motherfucker for so long? Same thing like that bitch, Devin. She ain't going to learn until it's too late. And I'm glad that we not friends. I, when I went to the school today, a back to school night, I was saying to myself, I hope I don't see this bitch. For real. Because I'm not the phony type. And what I mean by that is, bitch, you ain't called me in months. And you stopped speaking to me because of him. You, and on top of that, not only did you stop speaking to me, but you talked about me to your daughter. Because your daughter told my daughter, Mumsy, and Mumsy came and told me. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, what the fuck? Like, she told her daughter, well, just because you and Mumsy are friends don't mean I have to be her mother's friend. Why would you say that? And then she went to Mumsy and said, why would she say that? What does she mean? The Mumsy said, ask me. And I was like, what? I already knew what the fuck she was saying. But like, bitch, we not friends know how. We weren't friends or anything like that. You the one that wanted to be all my friends and talk about, we can hang out. We could do this. We alike. No, bitch, we not the fuck alike. But we can hang out. We could be, all right, let me give you an opportunity. Only because my bestie moved to Cali. So I need somebody to chit chat with and kick it with. But you weren't even that bitch, all right? So I'm cool. I'm good. You the one that wanted to be my friend. But yeah, this is what she says to her daughter. And like, First of all, I don't want to be your motherfucking friend. Second of all, bitch, you ain't even on my level, meaning you got too much drama going on. You crying too much, and I don't got time for that shit, all right? I'm that type of bitch, like, I'm not going to let this nigga disrespect me. I'm going to be out, out. Fuck him, fuck you, and whoever else the horse they rode in on this motherfucker, okay? But okay, you know what I'm saying? So as I go into the school today, you know, because it's a campus. It, in Arizona, the, the schools are on the campus. It's not in the building. It's in the campus. So I'm liable to run into you. But, you know, I'm there. My bestie is there. She's in, she's enrolling her daughter back into school and shit and her son. And I'm there with my bestie and her husband. You know, we happy. Ah, we talking, blah, 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 blah. And I'm saying to myself, self, and I'm saying to Nay, because Nay knows me. I'm like, I hope I don't run into this little girl mother. I don't even want to say little girl name, but you know what I'm saying? I hope I don't run into Devin, because that's her name. And they already know. I'm like, because I don't have time for it. I'm not one of those phony people. I would not want you to come up to me and be like, hey, girl, what's, what you been up to? And nah, we're not about to do that here. We're not. We're not. What I would have probably had said to her is like, what? Girl, you don't even call me? What? what? What is you talking about? I would have been like, or, you know, like I told my husband, I was going to say that. What? Do I know you? I could be on some shit like that. What? Do I know you? And walk off. That'd be me. It, that, it's best that I do you like that instead of just be like, wah, wah, wah. I don't got time for that shit because, bitch, I'm too old and I'm too mature for that and I'm better than that. You're not even on my level. Fuck out of here, okay? So I'm glad that I didn't run into her because I know her. She would have been like her daughter would have came to say hi to Mumsy because they friends. And then she would have been standing there. And then she's, oh, girl. Hey. So I'm glad that I didn't because I don't really want to act up. And I don't really want you to see my bitchy side, whether I could care less or not. But 
that type of bitch is just like your friend, okay, Tina. And those are the type of bitches you just got to stay away from. Like, for real, they just bring too much negativity to the circle, even though the circle is like a dot, okay? But you just bring too much drama and bullshit to the circle. And, bitch, I'm not here for that. I'm not fucking built like that. I don't have time for the drama. April will pop the fuck off in a heartbeat, okay? So let's just chill the fuck out. Plus, your daughter is too fresh, and I'm really not here for the shit. I'm just not here for the fuckery, okay? I'm not here for it. Straight up. Now, keep yourself away from the bitch. Other than that, this was the real talk. I hope you guys enjoyed it. You know what I wanted to tell you guys? I, like, I hope you guys have watched my latest um, family vlog when we was at the aquarium and stuff. You know, I appreciate my subscribers being so concerned about me and my family. But you should never judge a book by its cover. Straight up, okay? And I'm going to say this. Because this is what I need for you guys to, to know. Never judge a book by its cover. Just because you may sense or feel something is not the case. You know what I'm saying? I get an email and basically she said, I watched your, your, your vlog and thank you for sharing such intimate moments of your family with us. But I sense some tension and stress between your mother and the grandchildren. What? Um, your mother looked like your mother looked like she was tearing, crying, and Tati, what she called Tani or whatever, she was um, at the birthday cake cutting. She was crying too. First of all, like um, you know, I just stressed. I, I just noticed that and attention, and you know, I hope things are well. Thank you for hoping things are well. But what you seen, you did not motherfucking see. You know what I'm saying? Like my mother wears glasses, so. How could you see her motherfucking crying? But she wasn't crying at the bench at the aquarium. My mother suffers from thyroids and also glaucoma in one of her eyes, which makes it a little bit blurry and harder for her to see. So what makes you think that there's tension between the grandkids? My mother loves the hell of them and they fucking worship the ground my mom is on. So that kind of like pissed me off. Then the part where she was just like, Tati was crying. Tati wasn't motherfucking crying. Tati had concealer all on her face that wasn't even blended in. So we're, you know, that's the shit that I don't really fucking like. Like, you know what I'm saying? Don't judge a book by its cover. Just like another vlog of mine where, you know, Tinky hit me in the, in the eye when we was doing our, our packaging opening, you know, and I was like in the title, Tinky gave me a black eye. I didn't have a black eye. Of course, you guys know that, knows that. Of course, you guys know that, but did this fucking crazy psychotic bitch keep, not the same person, I don't know if it's the same person, it might be the same person, but she left all these comments talking about, oh, you didn't get punched in the face by Tinky, you basically got beat up by your boyfriend, and don't you think it's a real red flag that who has a boyfriend that lives in another state or a man that lives in another state, I can tell you're in a domestic violence situation, like, what? Bitch, what the fuck is wrong with you? You're crazy. And I, when I got this email from this young lady last night, you know, like I responded to it and I just basically let her know, like, you know what I'm saying? Thanks for the concern, but um, I basically didn't like the email that she sent. And I wasn't rude, but you should never judge a, a book by its cover. Don't, don't go emailing me or anybody else because you might think what you've seen is something negative. That to a person like me, it's like, it's not disrespectful, but it can be, but it also can feel like, bitch, you being, and I said it, I said, you being a little bit invasive or I said, you, you real intrusive right now from emailing me this, okay, to say these things. Because for one, you don't, and I said, you don't even know anything about you speaking of, okay? You know what I'm saying? That makes me feel some type of way. Like, stop trying to read into my motherfucking life that hard. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I invite you guys in my motherfucking life because that's what the fuck I do but stop for those of you who are trying so motherfucking hard to be that fucking intrusive in my life stop trying to read into that shit so hard like on some real shit because you can see one thing and it may not even be totally what you mean First of all, you know what I'm saying? Like, so you wrote this shit about my mom and my kids. Meanwhile, you didn't even know my mother has glaucoma in her eye and she suffers from thyroids, which fucks up her eyes. And you write some shit like that to me, that will piss a motherfucker off on some real shit. And I try to keep my composure in the email because I know how I can get. Like, I'm going to just email you off 
and I'm going to tell you to fuck off in a nice way, like fuck out of here in a nice way. But I'm going to let you know in that nice way, fuck out of here and don't ever write me no shit like that. Like I cannot stand when people judge people by what they see. Like, okay, say y'all see me out in public and I got some old jeans on and just an old shirt and my hair and my makeup ain't done. You know what I'm saying? Y'all might say, oh, this bitch is a bum. She ain't got shit. You know, you don't even know me. And you know what I'm saying? Shit like that. And then the next time you see me, oh, this bitch driving this. And this is what I'm talking about. Like, never judge a person by what you see because you don't really fucking know them. Like, you could see me out in public and think, like, I'm the nicest motherfucker in the world because you see me on YouTube. I could totally not be that. I could be the most bitchiest asshole in the fucking world, okay? Like, on some real shit. Not saying that I am, but you never judge a person from what you see or from their family for what you see because you don't know them. And then when you come at them and you say these things, you totally could be wrong. And then that person, like myself, could take that shit to a whole different level. Like, bitch, why are you trying to be so intrusive? Like, Email me about some fucking positive shit. Don't email me about some negative shit about my own shit that you don't even know what the fuck you're talking about that ain't even popping off. Like, that really pissed me off. Like, oh, I felt some tension and stress between your mom and the grandkids. That pissed me the fuck off because, first of all, my mom loves the hell out of my kids and they love the hell out of her. But that really pissed me the fuck off for the fact that what the fuck makes you think some shit like that? Don't get off on saying some shit like that about my family. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just had to air that out real quick because it really did kind of piss me the fuck off. But I handled it in a manner where, you know what, I'm about to tell this bitch real quick. And yes, I'm calling her a bitch. I call everybody a motherfucking bitch. No pun intended. But I'm about to tell this bitch real quick, like, this is not the deal. And I could have just cussed you the fuck out. But you know what, I'm, I don't have time for that because it's not worth my time. And you're not worth me getting angry over. But I was pissed off about it. And I just felt like the need to tell you guys, stop trying to judge people from what you see. Because you don't really know the deal. You know what I'm saying? You could see somebody wear the same shit every motherfucking day and feel like they ain't got shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, you could see somebody wear the same jeans and the same t-shirt every motherfucking day and drive a raggedy car. And when I say raggedy, you don't even have to be raggedy. It could be like five, six, seven years old. You know what I'm saying? And you might feel like they ain't got shit. They probably living like all, you know, fucked up or whatever. Meanwhile, these motherfuckers could be living in a big ass motherfucking house with a nice ass pool and another nice ass car. You don't know. You don't know what people's lives are really like. So you have to stop judging people by the appearance. Okay? Straight up. So on that note, you guys, I love you. Stay diva and divalicious. Make sure you rate, comment, and subscribe. Share this video with everyone that you like. And even those that you don't like. I love you guys. Stay deep and deep delicious. Uh, and I'll see you guys on uh, your uh, What? Damn. 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 Damn.